I think he's finally found a groove. Um, first three games, he was three for 15 for the three point line. Uh, the last seven, he shot and he shot, he shot 56% from the three point line. Now, that's not going to continue, but he can give them an element that they just haven't had. The guy who is not going to be heavily defended because there's so much emphasis on Tatum and Brown. So he's going to get, he's going to get open threes. Now, defenses will adjust. They will not let him, you know, it's like, yeah, they, they will they will have someone by him at all times. But what that does is open things up for other people. If you have to have someone who's designed to not let Hauser out of their grips, you know, following around everywhere because he's so dangerous on the three-point line. The Atlas Podcast is brought to you by FanDuel, the exclusive wagering partner of the CLNS Media Network. Hello, everyone. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the A-List Podcast. I'm Kwani Ludnes, joined, as usual, by H.R. Blakely, Gary Washburn. How have you two been this week? Wonderful. Wonderful, Kwani. Not Gary, like Celtics doing? wonderful, but okay. I'm doing wonderful. <laughs> Not as wonderful. 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 <laughs> how you doing, Gary? Yeah. yeah. I'm fine. Everything, everything is good. Okay. That's good yeah. to hear. Gary's yeah. just said not to get fine. Yep. <laughs> right, exactly. He just tried to tell me You sound like Jalen Brown in that walk-off interview after, after the Knicks game. I didn't see that. Did he, what did he say? Is that good or bad? Five words or less. Every answer was like five yeah. words or less. Oh, that's right. I felt, yeah. like, I, I felt like he said his inner Rasheed Wallace at that moment. Yeah. Which is unusual for him, too, at that. <laughs> don't do play hard. Make yeah. plea. Ball don't lie. I can't with you. Anyway, let's get into this Celtics team. They recently defeated the New York Knicks, 114-98. Tatum with a 35-point game, 17 in the fourth. Brown looks good as well with 22 points. Sam Hauser stepped up as well, 12 points, four for five, four for six on threes. What did you guys make of that game? What does it say about this team? It's, again, so early in the season, but what is something maybe new that you learned about the Celtics during that win? After that, well, one. I mean, it's, it's early in the season, but this is the second time they played New York, and, and I thought mm-hmm. actually New York played better, better uh, yeah. in this game. It did a, a lot of things that New York, I think, came to the game wanting to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, they wanted to be physical. They wanted to, you know, get off to a good start. They wanted Jalen Brunson to be more assertive and aggressive, attacking, getting to the basket, make big shots, they played the shot clock, and they did a lot of those things. But as the game wore on, it became very apparent that the Celtics were just a better team. The Celtics took that punch came with their own counterpunch. And, that, you know, the guys that you mentioned all stepped up in their own way. Uh, Tatum, especially down the stretch where he finished with 35, and I think he had 17 in the fourth. So this was a good win for the Celtics, uh, I, I thought. When you look at the caliber opponent and the fact that their opponent actually played better the second time than they did the first time. And they still, the end result was the same for the Celtics, which is a victory. Yeah, I thought that uh, the Knicks, aren't afraid of Celtics. Like they pushed back. They didn't have RJ Barrett. Um, they started Josh Hart, who ended up having <laughs> a pretty interesting game. It was just a, it was a, all, a, all of what Josh Hart has to offer. Good plays, crazy plays. It was an interesting, plays. Yeah, interesting night for Josh Hart. But um, I thought that they punched the the Celtics first. Randall was trying to get, go, go, get going. Brunson was hitting those uh, step back jumpers. Heart three pointers, you know, but I thought the Celtics clamped down in the second half. First, I thought that the interesting aspect defensively was their emphasis on Quigley. Quigley usually kills them, and Quigley couldn't, he won for 10, seven points, like Quigley couldn't get out of his own way. And I thought that was the best defensive job since I've seen Quigley been in the league that they've done against Quigley because Quigley can get to his spots, hit that floater, hit some threes. He always does well against the Celtics. He had 20. Um, five points in 24 minutes, or it's like 28 minutes um, in the opener. So the fact that they held them to seven, I just thought the defense in the second half, they asserted themselves, they outscored New York 62 to 45. They were just like trying to the better team. And then that's a good, that's a, I thought it was an impressive win because they, they did not win strictly with offense. They won with their defense. New York, their offense was frazzled, several shot clock violations or them having to fire a, a, a shot up in the last two seconds, three seconds of the shot clock to, to beat it. 
Um, you know, Randall was erratic. You know, Randall was trying to get going, and he can get going, but he's not had a good season. He was erratic. They let they limited Brunson in the second half. And I just thought when Brunson hit that three, and I think it was 91-88, and the Celtics just then said, okay, and they went on a run, and they took control. And then Tatum, obviously, 17 to fourth, four three-pointers uh, after a slow start. So I thought it was a complete victory. I was impressed simply because you talk about division of opponents. Like you've played the Nets twice now. Um, you've played the Knicks twice. Those teams know you. They're not afraid. They know, they know how to play you. And, and, and for them, and then for them to beat Toronto by almost 30, I mean, that was impressive. But I thought the Knicks game, because it was a uh, you know third game in four nights, the Knicks know them, Thibodeau's good coach, well-coached team, that um, I thought that was an impressive win for them to pull away like that. And I brought up Sam Hauser because we, over the last few weeks, have already been talking about the bench and the depth that they need and the scoring that they need to come off of their bench. So him with 12 points, are you buying or selling that Hauser is the answer to the bench prayers that they've been having so far? Um, I think he's finally found a groove. Um, first three games, he was three for 15 from the three point line. Uh, the last seven he shot and he shot, he shot 56% from the three point line. Now that's not going to continue, but he can give them an element that they just haven't had. The guy who is not going to be heavily defended because there's so much emphasis on Tatum and Brown. So he's going to get, he's going to get open threes. Now defenses will adjust. They will not let him, you know, it's like, yeah, they, they will, they will have someone by him at all times. But what that does is open things up for other people. If you have to have someone who's designed to not let Hauser out of their grips, you know, follow him around everywhere because he's so dangerous on the three point line. So I thought it was an impressive game for Hauser. Um, Peyton is starting to play better now. Let's see what Peyton can do on the road. He's one for 23 on the road this year from the field, 0 for 16 from three. So we'll see in this road trip what happens, how he responds. He's 50-something percent from the field at home, and I think 23% or whatever, one for 23 is uh, 16% maybe, something like that on the road. So let's see how he can respond away from the garden. But Hauser, as you said, asked Quan, it could be the answer. Like that, they've been searching. I think they realized that they let Max Strews kind of slip out of their hands. They didn't get – they. They were so impatient. They didn't give him enough time to really develop. Now he's in Cleveland on a you know sixty four million dollar deal, and he's a, he's become an elite shooter. Um, so th- I think when they saw Hauser, they said, "Okay, we got a guy who has a chance to be an elite shooter. We're going to you know uh, develop him, make sure he's ready." And this being his second full season, it seems like he's ready for the challenge. Score early this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 Moneyline bet. That's $150 if your team wins. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is so easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and so much more. So visit FanDuel.com slash Boston and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. I'm buying all in on Hauser as being the answer for them. Because, first of all, he's the only one that stepped up. I mean, it's it's pretty clear that they need someone to get buckets off the bench. And they're looking around. Peyton ain't getting it. Mm-hmm. Al's not getting it. So, Sam, like, well, shoot. I'll let it fly. And he's doing that. And he's doing it with confidence. I thought it would take him a little bit more time to get into a flow and look in, in a rhythm this year. Uh, but three games, it's just, I mean, it's a drop in a bucket. Uh, when you talk about what he has been able to bring and the element that he's providing. Uh, and the thing about it, Gary, I'm not sure his shooting is going to drop that much because he's going to be getting these same shots all season. Teams are going to be forced to play off of him and give him space because do you want to play all up in Sanfro and let Jalen and Jason and Drew and Derek, do you want them to get their thing going? And, and the answer is no, because those are better players than Sam. And Sam is smart enough 
to shoot with confidence when the tension is on those other guys. So I, I don't think his shooting is going to drop off that much. I think because right now he's in a great flow, great rhythm, and I think he's going to be in that for most of the season. Now, does that mean he's going to go four for six every night? Hell no, that ain't going to happen. But I think at the end of the season, I think his numbers are probably going to be in the low to mid-40s in terms of three-point shooting. And if you got a guy who's getting basically five, six attempts a night who's shooting around that, that's that's going to give you six, on average, probably six, seven, eight points a night off the bench from one guy. And when you got the firepower that they have in that starting lineup, that that's that's a luxury to have, a guy that you can count on could get you damn near double figures off the bench who doesn't need a ton of shots to do it. So I, I'm buying that Sam's going to be that answer because he's figured out what he has to do, and he's comfortable, I think, finally being on the floor and, and knowing that he can do more than just knock down shots. Because you go back and you look at that game against the Knicks, you know, Sam did not come out just knocking down shots or looking for a shot. He was trying to do other things to justify why he was on the floor. And he, at one point, he was their leading rebounder with three, I think, in the first quarter. And it's little things like that that Sam has to consistently do to justify and validate his, his ability to be on the floor and be an impact player. Because he's going to score, he's going to make shots, we know that, but can he do other, some of those other little things until he gets it going offensively? And he's shown the ability the last couple of games to be just that guy. I want to go more into depth about Tatum's fourth quarter because, of course, that's really what everyone was talking about Tuesday morning. But 17 in the fourth, he continues to build upon the – so again, it's early in season, but the success that he has in previous games. So what do, have you both most enjoyed from watching him so far? And what are you looking forward to him growing continuously? With? For me, it's the mid-range game. Uh, him taking cats on the block and just hitting him with that fadeaway jump shot when he's got a little guy on him who's got some strength. Mm -hmm. uh, but when he's got a big guy on him, he just blows right past him. I love the fact that he's not settling as much as he has done in the past. And he still does now. Uh, there's no doubt about that. There's absolutely no doubt about that. But it, it's not nearly at, at the volume level that we've seen in the past. And, they, and that to makes him just a, so much more of a dangerous scorer when he's knocking down those, those mid-range jump shots, which fadeaways along the baseline, and, and shots of that nature. So that part of his game is what excites me the most about him because the other parts we've seen, those we know they're there, we know how impactful he can be with the three ball and things like that. But can he make teams pay when they play? put a little guy on him and let that little guy defend him one-on-one. -on -one. And he's just, he's, look, he's doing what you're supposed to do. What do you do with little kids? You take him to school. Take you to school. Take the kids to school. <laughs> Funny, you know what I'm talking about. That's what dad did. That's what dad did. Your dad, take him to school. Tatum is taking little fellas to school when they get on him and he tries to defend him. I, that's what I love. Educating the youth. I love it, Tatum. Educating either that analogy or taking candy from a baby, but either one, it's clearly the... <laughs> The kids are learning something. <laughs> teach. Teach one. Preach one. Right, G? G, what do you think? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think Tatum is uh, beginning to pick it up. Um, and his numbers have been impressive this year, you know. Um, almost 40% from the three-point line so far, 41% uh, in, in seven November games. And he's not taking as many shots, um, you know, as he has in the past. But his rebound numbers are up, almost nine boards, four assists, um, you know, 1.2 steals. So he's doing it all. And his turnovers aren't aren't out of control either. I mean, he's, you know, he's um, trying to keep those down, you know, and I think that's a good thing. Keep it under three a game. You know, he, he's got so much usage. He's going to turn the ball over every now and then, um, you know, maybe a charge or, or, you know, a lost dribble or something like that. But I just think he's been extremely efficient. Not trying to force things. There's some times where Jason will be like, okay, I got to get mine. Um, but there's other times where he just kind of like plays in the flow of the game and lets the game come to him. And I think last night against the Knicks, um, he let the game come to him. And in the fourth quarter, he was feeling it and the Knicks couldn't do anything about it. And I also like the fact that he's attacking the rim, getting to the basket, dribbling around multiple defenders, um, and, and just getting to his spots. Um, he's not letting people daunt him in terms of like staying rim protection, especially if you bring out a big, he's going to dribble right past him and get to the rim or he's going to get fouled. Um, so I think I've been impressed with his overall game so far this year. So I'm not the biggest of stat heads, but there were two that stood out to me 
over the last like 24 hours. One was from NBC Sports Boston that says Tatum's plus his differential is net rating differential is 37 plus 37. The Celtics have scored opponents by 23.4 points per 100 possessions in his 362 minutes of court time. But then to add to that on ESPN earlier this morning, on Tuesday morning, I um, Stephen A mentioned that obviously we know Tatum's a superstar, but then the Celtics starting five is outscoring their opponents by 39 points for every 100 possessions as well. Obviously adding to the point that there are very good starting five at this point. So they're riding a three game winning streak right now. What do they need to do overall to just keep this momentum? And obviously there are people that really get into the numbers and of course the numbers are important, but what exactly should they be doing to make sure they're keeping that momentum? You got it, Gary. I just think continue to play defense um, and, you know, score from both sides to me. You know, don't fall in love with the three, score for the mid-range. Jason has such a smooth mid-range game. So does Jalen, Chris Stapps, um, Drew Holiday can post you up. You know, let just play within the flow of the game. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you can do that and you can defend better, uh, especially over these next few games. And let's be honest, like Philadelphia's going to be a tough assignment. Toronto's going to want payback for a lot of things, all that stuff that went down with the with the challenge. And then you got Marcus Smart reunion in Memphis. And then you got a, you know, end of the road trip back to back against Charlotte. So this trip is not easy. It's some tricky games. The last two games you consider probably trap games. The first two are going to be heavily competitive. And Friday is going to be the uh, playing tournaments. So the Celtics are trying to get to Vegas. So that becomes a more important game. So I, I think they just, one, stick to their defensive principles, hustle, you know, block out on rebounds, make don't get pounded on the boards, uh, you know, prevent second chance points, and then just play within the flow of the offense. I just think when, you know, when they're shooting threes in the flow of the offense, they're a, a fantastic team to watch. They're a great offense. It's when they start forcing them. It's when, oh, you hit one, well, I'm about to hit one too. Like, don't do that. Get to the be get the best shot if it's a three, if it's a two. And just play with the flow of the game. And I think as long as they continue to gel and, and come together in terms of, you know, getting Holiday integrated, mm -hmm. so Chris Stas integrated, you know, and some of the other new guys, I think they'll be fine. I mean, it's only 10 games in. They are they are far from a finished product. Yeah. Wait, before you sure the answer, I, I do have to give you your flowers, Gary, because, of course, you were in the news this week. Uh, obviously, you don't ever plan to be in the news as a journalist. You're, I think, pretty good at making sure that you're holding teams accountable and asking questions that you think are fair questions. So I'm just saying that because of obviously everyone at this point knows that you asked the question about threes to the coach this past week, but I think it was actually one that was worth at least just addressing because that is what we do as journalists. And I think, again, this is my opinion, but generally speaking, when you think about journalism, you shouldn't be afraid to address something, whether you're objectively or subjectively right or wrong, I think. It's something worth asking, but just wanted to. Gary when you mentioned threes, trouble. I thought about it, so I was like, I'm just gonna mention Gary it for myself. Trouble, so. No, he does not. Gary, he just a <laughs> troublemaker. The boys from Cal, that's what they do. They just start I, trouble. I, no. I'll just say it's like, uh, you know, I'm with you, G. there's nothing. No, no, no. I know what you're saying. There's nothing I ask that's not thought about, or I just coming <laughs> off the uh, coming off the the wing just to just to start something. Um, you know, obviously, Joe, since of about three, we have talked about this for the year plus that he's been coached, the amount of threes that they take, how that's affected them, impacted them, sometimes negatively in terms of uh, big games coming up short, not shooting the three ball well and not having another way to score. So I thought in the Philadelphia game, just my humble opinion, having watched you know, 2000 NBA games that they tried to rally and come back and they were shooting not so smart threes, maybe pound the two. They're a good two point team. You know, sometimes you got to take the best shot and not the the money shot. So, um, you know, that was that was my point of view. Yeah. But I, you know, it's not that I'm consumed with threes. But for years, this team is <laughs> taking a lot of threes and in big games, falling short yeah. by falling in love with the three. And is the question is, is this year going to be any different? You know, you don't have, you know, Hauser, you can consider an elite shooter, but he needs a bigger sample size. And Tatum, you know, none of those shooters are Steph or Clay, right? 
And those guys even struggle at times with Clay, but maybe not Steph. Um, so when you get guys that sometimes take too many or take them forced or are trying to, like we talked about earlier, trying to get like, oh, you hit one, Jason? All right, I got you. I'm yeah, I'm, I'm going to add to the party. You know, like – you got to play smarter ball than that. So that was all. I mean, I you know, I'm never going to, I'm never going to back down. I'm never going to, you know, um, I just want to cover the team. I cover fairly. And with, a, you know, I, I'm not a fan. I, I don't have my pom-poms. I'm not going to, Oh, well, you know, I, this is, you know, Oh, the Celtics are great. Like if they're great, I'm going to say they're great. If they're not great, I'm going to say they're not great. So that's, yeah. that's, that's my approach. I do think the whole thing was overinflated in general, but we are in a market where when it's a slow day, they're going to talk about something. So unfortunately they decided to talk about Gary that last week, earlier this week. Sherrod, what do you think about what they need to do to continue this momentum? I mean, the, the biggest thing is just maintain focus. I mean, the, when this team has struggled, it's usually because they just lose sight of the prize. Uh, and, and the prize for them is to keep, putting these building blocks on top of building blocks on top of building blocks towards a championship. And it's doing little things like figuring out what, you know, who's going to give you some juice off the bench. Uh, who's going to give you, you know, that unexpected lift from that starting unit. Where's the mismatch that you can exploit? Uh, how well are you going to be in terms of uh, utilizing your two one two press, uh, which has been a great wrinkle that, that Joe has, has kind of worked into, you know, the, the, the game plan night in, night out. Little things like that may not by themselves seem like that big a deal, but when you start stacking them on top of each other, you start realizing that this is the building of something special. And players, I think they throw that whole phrase around way too damn much about this team feels kind of special. Now, look, to me, special is when you are making the really unique look normal. That's special. When you're able to play at a ridiculously high level and that's just a normal day walking apart, that's when you know your team is special. And I thought against New York, that was one of the few signs I've seen from the Celtics that made me think that this was a special team. New York played like, again, they played a better game than they did in the opener. They played a game that I think if this, if the Celtics of last year were playing last night or the other night, they would have lost. They would not have won that game. And that is part of this team's growth. That is part of why this team, I don't see them being anything close to where they were a year ago. There's a quiet swagger about them that we didn't see last year. Like, they go into these games thinking, I don't know how much we're going to win by, but we're going to win. I know they got out and they, they scored. They were up by six, seven, eight points in the first half, but we still going to win. And it doesn't, they don't allow themselves to get down by, like, 20 points and then start balling out. Um, like we've seen Celtics team in the past, which is just the most frustrating things with fans. Because they're thinking, like, damn, you worked that hard to get back to the game to tie it up when you know your ass should not have been down that many to begin. They don't seem to allow that stuff to happen, and, and I don't know whether it's just simply a conscious thing or whether having elite defenders like Derek White, Drew Holiday, emerging defenders like Mark, like uh, you know Tatum and Brown, and even though he's not, no one will consider him by any stretch of the imagination an elite defender, Sam Hauser ain't killing you when he's out there now. Uh, guys are not making him the you know the, the walking road kill that some thought he was defensive. Um, he's 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 not bad. So when you start adding up all those little things and and you start looking at the body of work and then you realize, damn, that's pretty nice. They got a squad. That's what they need to keep doing. They need to keep building what they've started. These are your hiring goals, they say. They're very aggressive, but when you, everyone looks to you, you're calm. Why? Because you know you don't need a miracle, you need Indeed. Indeed is a hiring platform where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place instead of spending hours on multiple job sites searching for candidates with the right skills. Indeed's a powerful hiring platform that can help you do it all. They streamline hiring with powerful tools that can help you find your match candidates. With Instant Match, over 80% of employers get quality candidates whose resume on Indeed match their job description the moment they sponsor a job. Candidates you apply, you invite to apply are three times more likely, likely to apply to your job than candidates who only see it in the search. Indeed does the hard work for you and they show you candidates whose resume, once again, on Indeed fit the job description immediately after you post so that you can hire faster. 
Even better, Indeed's the only job site where you only pay for applications that meet your must-have requirements. Indeed is an unbelievably powerful hiring platform delivering four times more hires than all other job sites combined, according to Talent Nest in 2019. You can start hiring now with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job posts at indeed.com slash A-list. Offer good for a limited time. Claim your $75 credit right now at indeed.com slash A-list. Once again, indeed.com slash A-list and show the that support by saying you heard this on the podcast. Indeed.com slash A-list. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire. You need Indeed. So looking ahead, there are two games that we're going to talk about before we wrap up. The first one is against the Sixers on Thursday. Of course, they were one of the two losses that the Celtics have had so far this season. But there's a big factor that may or may not affect this game as well. Kelly Oubre, unfortunately, was in a car accident. He broke some ribs, but he's expected. It's not a season-ending injury, but obviously that means he'll be out for that game. He had 14 and points, eight rebounds in that last um, loss for the Celtics. Tyrese Maxey had 25, nine rebounds, five assists. So obviously Maxey and Embiid are going to be more of the focuses when it comes to making sure that they don't get to the rim as much as they want to. But what other factors do you think could affect this game for the Celtics? And really looking at that first loss already, what can they do better overall? I think they need to be... The hustle plays, not allowing offensive rebound, blocking out, doing, you know, the second chance points, controlling Maxi, not letting him run pick and rolls and just have at it from the mid range. Um, I thought they did a good job against Embiid. Embiid, I think, at 27 points, or, uh, I mean, 25 points. He didn't kill him. He didn't, he didn't take 15, 18 free throws. I thought he was, I thought they kept him in check for, you know, 25 points for him is in check. Um, he didn't dominate down the stretch, but I just thought the other guys, you know, uh, had their moments. And I said, Maxi, I thought controlled the pace of the game. And then I thought Tobias Harris was very good. Best probably I've seen him in a few years against the Celtics. So you could either say, A, uh, some of that's not going to happen. Is Harris going to play that well? And then it was a, not a good game from Jalen. Um, you know, I thought, you know, Jason was okay. You know, but so you would expect a better Jason and Jalen. Um, Derek White, three from for 11 from three point. All right, coming off having uh, obviously, you know, his, his wife had his second child, so he was still kind of tired trying to get his trying to get his legs under him. Um, I know Porzingis is questionable for the game. He bumped knees with Julius, it's a legit injury. He bumped knees with Julius Randle. He kind of limped, but he stayed in the game. But I'm sure that thing swelled up. So we'll see uh, if he'll be able to go, you know, with them having a day off, you know, uh, before Toronto, whether he'll be able to go uh, in this game. But I just think be more efficient, be more, pay attention to better, pay better attention to detail. I said the offensive rebounding, don't let Philly get the Philly was just a harder playing team in that game. The hustle plays, the little things, and that just ended up burning the Celtics. The second chance points, and you know, oh, back to Covington, he takes, he hits a three, or Batoon hits a three off of like things like that. They're just killers. So to me, I just think if they pay, pay better attention to detail and you get a better Jason and Jalen, they have a good chance of win. Yeah, you, you, that that that's 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 all good but this this team uh, I really think they need to win this game uh, for no other reason than just send a message that we here y'all coming for our crown and we ain't ready to give it up just yet uh, I think there's there this game is one of those where I, I think there will be some psychological warfare going on as well as what you see in between the lines uh, Philadelphia and we, we've been around this Sixers team enough to know that the Celtics kind of own them uh, the Celtics have won lots of games against them, and you know, the, to the point where Philly got to the point where they overpaid for Al Horford so that they wouldn't have to play against him, uh, and that, that didn't work out nearly as well as they would have hoped. But this is this this Philly needs this win way more than the Celtics do, simply because the Celtics have a different kind of swagger about them that allows them to take losses and not be devastated by them. I mean, they lost back-to-back games, and the next game out, 
you would have thought that they were riding a six, seven, eight game win streak. They just seem real cool, calm and collected about it. And that's why that, that approach is going to work well for them most nights. Uh, they're going to be able to walk into buildings that are supposedly hostile and, and really volatile and loud and all that. And just be like, all right, y'all ready? All right, let's go get this dub. And that's how they roll. Uh, the Sixers are a good team, uh, but the Celtics are a better team. And I think they, I think both sides know this. Uh, it's just a matter of going between those lines and making it happen. The second most, well, they equally as important game <laughs> this week, though, is them in their second in-season tournament game. They're playing Toronto on Friday. So similar to Philly, what do you think they need to do to win, specifically against the Raptors? Well, first of all, I like the fact that the Raptors are going to have some negative, nasty, volatile energy in this game. <laughs> uh, they, they were mad that Joe did a challenge late in the game and was already decided. And mm-hmm. I would have been mad if I were them if Joe was challenging like a two that Joe wants to be a three. I would have been mad about that. What Joe did, I think most coaches would or should have done in that situation. And here's why. You've got a team full of a lot of guys that you don't really know. And they don't really know you. You're trying to build a bond. You're trying to build trust. And one of the easiest ways to enhance that that whole dynamic and relationship is to show that you believe in them when you don't have to. Joe Mazzula could have easily said to my guy, Brissette, said, you know what? I know we get this call, but we don't buy whatever. Don't even worry about it. We'll just keep playing. But he was like, nah, you think that was a bad call? I'm going to show you. I believe you. And this is how I'm going to show you. And Toronto, you know, they got they got any feelings about that. And I always come back to this. Whenever a team does something that I don't like, I got to ask myself, could I have done something different? Could I have prevent, prevented that from happening? And if I could, how can I be salty about that? Real simple, Toronto, play better. Play better. Stop it! Stop! Stop getting your ass kicked and, and start kicking some ass. It's that simple. It's that simple. Uh, and and Joe and Joe talked about that in the post game where he is always going to stick up for his players. And to me, that got him so made. Listen, whatever Joe Mazzulla's credit score in that locker room is, he got a boost by calling that challenge and it being correct. And it was, and he was right. You're trying to get as many people in a in a circle of trust. As you can. And oh shit, Rashad, remember, he's one of those guys that's some nights he's in, some nights he's out. If he's able to recognize a bad call and Joe says, I believe you, and Joe is then proven right, that builds a stronger connection between those two. And if you're like, let's say, Lamar Stevens or you're Kata or you're someone who doesn't play and you get in the game and you see there's a BS call, you're confident that you can go to your coach and say, that was a BS call. Mm-hmm. And that coach is going to be like, you know what? I got you. I got you. We yeah. may be up by 17 points in two minutes to play, but I got you in that Why call. Not? And mm-hmm. that's the thing that the Raptors just don't understand, which is why they're the Raptors. The NBA's version of KFC with all the wings they got on the team. Because that's all they got is wings. That's all they got. <laughs> I- Barbecue. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you was all right, then you just took the next step. Lo- I was like, hey, FC, what? what are you talking about? Popeyes. <laughs> Wayne players, G. OG. We get it. We get Scotty. it. We, we understand. Get it. Lemon pepper, barbecue. <laughs> I'm like hungry. Well, on that note, that's all we have for this week's episode. Of course, if you haven't already, please subscribe, share with a friend, tell a friend, text a friend, phone a friend, email a friend. Write a letter. <laughs> okay, I'm done. Anyway, all I mean is... Right yeah, there. it's going to with you listening to the podcast, but seriously, share it with someone that you think would actually find this podcast entertaining. And for all our loyal listeners, we appreciate y'all for sticking with us. Until next week, I'm Kwani Lunas, Aisha Blakely, Gary Washburn. We are the A-List Podcast. We'll be back. FanDuel is the exclusive wagering partner of the CLNS Media Network. Right now, new customers... Get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL.
Ever wish you could navigate the betting field with the confidence of a pro? Enter Odds Are. They're not a sports book, but they're the sports betting advisor you always needed. It's like having a playbook for smarter bets right in your pocket. I've been absolutely loving the experience, and I think you will too. Especially since Celtics All Access listeners get a 30-day free trial. Elevate your game day and join the smart betting revolution. Go get it at oddsr.com slash Celtics. That's oddsr.com slash Celtics.